Hi, my name is Stephen Stark, and I'm a musician and a music teacher, and this is part two of my musical origin story. In part one, I talked about how I became a string player. In part two, I'm talking about how I became a composer. And again, none of this is because my story is so particularly interesting, but everybody's origin story is pretty interesting. In part one, I talked about how we always had a piano in our house. The funny thing is I remember writing something on the piano. I must have been four or five or six, and it was this tiny little repetitious thing that I wrote, and for some reason, I still remember it to this day. I'll play it for you. It's the simplest thing you've ever heard. It went like this. Just as simple as can be, but I played it over and over again. I must have, since I still remember it to this day. And it was that kind of obsession with patterns. Many years later, 6th, 7th, 8th grade, once orchestra really got into my blood, I started becoming obsessed with classical music. The music of Mozart, Dvorak. I also got really into film scores. You know, of course, all the John Williams stuff. But you know what movie was really big for me? The animated movie An American Tale with amazing music by James Horner. I listened to the heck out of that tape. And then in eighth grade, I thought, why not try writing something? So I wrote something for solo cello. I don't have it. I don't remember thinking it was a big, significant undertaking. I just thought I'd give it a try, but I remember doing it. And then came a huge, huge, pivotal moment. One of those lightning strike moments. I was in 10th grade and I was sitting in geometry class. I didn't like geometry very much. So sorry, math people. I loved algebra, I'll say that, but geometry, ugh. And I just had some notebook paper and I started sketching and imagining an idea for a cello duet. Now, I had no idea about music, about any sort of rules or theory or anything, not really. To me, it was all just magic. Now, it's still magic, but there are certain rules and patterns that we know. But I didn't know any of that then. It was just, what can I imagine would sound right together? And I sat in that class and I sketched out a cello one part, a cello two part, thinking about it really hard, trying to imagine how the notes would sound together. And my next class was orchestra. So after geometry was over, thank goodness I didn't get caught, I took my little sketch duet into orchestra and my cello stand partner before class, or maybe it was after class, I said, hey, can you try playing this with me just for a minute? And he said, sure. We started playing the piece and it worked. The sounds I had imagined, I was now actually hearing. The harmonies were harmonizing. The flow of it made sense. Out of all the classical works I'd listened to over and over again, I had a certain sense of how patterns would develop. I was absolutely dumbfounded, awestruck, that I was capable of putting notes on paper that would make those types of sounds. I remember walking out of that class and literally I felt like my feet weren't touching the ground. It was as if lightning struck me, filled me with electricity, and then elevated me and I was just floating. It's no exaggeration to say this was one of the most pivotal moments of my life. I became obsessed with composers. I read so many books. A family friend of ours gave us the two volumes of the Milton Cross Encyclopedia of the Great Composers and Their Music, and I still have this ancient book. Through many difficult personal times during that time of my life, music became my refuge, my salvation, my inspiration. I wrote pieces for my high school orchestra, and I had directors who would actually take the time to let us play them sometimes. I was commissioned to write a piece by the Enid Symphony Orchestra so that they could help me raise money to go to Interlochen and attend the summer academy there in cello and composition. I had other people commission works for me to support me, to support this kid who's in high school who was so obsessed with music and liked to write music. And then I entered Oklahoma City University as a music composition major. And people would ask me, oh gosh, what are you going to do with that? And I'd always look at them and say, sell cars. My point was that I was there to learn about music. I needed to know everything that I could. Whatever happened afterward, I would worry about that later, but I needed to know this now. And you know, I still have a copy of that geometry cello duet that I wrote in 10th grade. Now this is a recopy of it I made to make it more legible, but I think I still have the original scrawls somewhere in my attic. And uh, why don't I play it for you? Just a little bit.
So again, that is how I became a composer. Part three coming soon.